Welcome back, baseball fans, to the sixth round of the draft. And it is the uh, 1972 players. Uh, and uh, we will announce picks when the uh, cards were taken and also if a card was uh, added in a previous round. Uh, at the top of the round, Cleveland. Oh, this is great. Just falls into their lap. They take uh, Dick Tidrow. Who actually started with a great card and then he kind of faded a little bit before he moved to the bullpen. But he starts with a 277 ERA and a 113 whip for the Cleveland Indians. Clevetown, nice little draft they're having. All right, and if we're looking at the, the rows here again, the um, 7202, the second player pick, taken from the 70, 1972 box, which is your entire sixth round. All right, the Colorado Rockies dipped into the retirement gig, and they called a guy uh, they had on their team once out of retirement. Uh, and the reason was is they couldn't put him on waivers because he didn't have a 1970 card. This is Joe LaHood. And um, so we had to sit on the retirement list, and nobody called except his old team, the Rockies, and said, we like that uh, power. And so, uh, yeah, Joe LaHood. Is a left handed, much needed left handed bat to the Colorado team. Toronto with a third pick. This is a nice pick for this particular team. Gentleman's name is Jim Brazil. Had only 91 at bats and 72, but he did a lot with them. Five home runs and 80, uh, 85 at bats, 91 plate appearances. He's got a 447 slug and 744 OPS. And he can play first and third and DH. And this team needs every player will have a use. This is the first real power hitter they have on their team. I mean, they took AG, who's got decent power, and Mike Lum, Tim Foley, Carl Taylor doesn't have a home run. So Brazil should hopefully help. Again, this is your typical expansion league player, um, expansion team player, a guy who is, um, how should we say, uh, small sample size. So small sample size guys like to go to uh, Toronto and teams like that. They're not going to end up with Hall of Famers. All right, the Cubs took Ron Santo in a previous round. Announced it earlier when they announced Rick Rushell. Oh, and the Padres, with the fifth pick in this round, took Enzo Hernandez, jumping into the shortstop fray. Even hitting at a buck ninety-five, he's not doesn't even make him the worst shortstop on his team. He's got some speed. Very successful base stealer, 24 stolen bases, and three only got the call three times. You think they'd make him a double leg? I guess he didn't steal enough bases. That's a shame. With the sixth pick, uh, they announced Bill Hands in a previous round of the Texas Rangers. With the seventh pick, oh, this is a nice pick for the Atlanta Braves. Just getting stronger all the time. They had an opening in their bullpen, and uh, Joe Horland at age 34 puts up a nice year. Area three and a whiff of a buck eleven, late in his career, um, and the Braves pick up on it. And if the Braves get nice pitching, we know the hitting's there. And look out, National League East is going to explode on us. All right, the Milwaukee Brewers added Steve Hubley in a previous round. That's your second pick. Okay, the Ohio players took a pitcher. They took a Vince Colbert. Um. He was available in their box, and they took him, and there you go. He's just a guy, as we like to say. At this point in the draft, we're starting to find that just guys who can pick up a ball and throw it, you know, are eligible for the draft. All right, Arizona, we talked about in the last video. They've completed their draft, so they have to sit quietly for three rounds here, the sixth, seventh, and eighth rounds, and wait to the token round to see if they want to replace any of their players. All right, the Expos needed to get some uh, second baseman against lefties and a little bit of defense at third. They did all of that with one player, Sid O'Brien. Not much of either, 207 hitter. But yeah, he can play second and third better than the incumbents. So there you go. They did improve the roster. The Cardinals needed a first baseman against left-handed pitching who could not suck in the field, and they've got Jim Beauchamp. He's a 3E25, not a 4E25, which means he doesn't completely suck. Uh, he hits 242 
And he hits lefties better than righties. And actually has five home runs. He was a pinch hitter. But he had five uh, pinch hit home runs, apparently. Uh, that was the most home runs in this era for him at age 32. So he'll be a nice little player for the Cardinals. The Florida Marlins. Now you see a left-handed pitcher was just taken by the Florida Marlins. And note that it's an area of 426. He also was 2-15, and 15, but you can't really hold wins and losses against guys like Ken Reynolds. 154 innings. It's not a bad card. And again, left-handers are like gold trying to find these guys. They didn't exist to begin with, and we're pushing 24 teams into a 32-team field. So it's, it's desperation time if you are a southpaw. All right, we mentioned earlier that the White Sox took Carlos May with Dick Allen, mentioned in the same uh, 70, year of 1972. What a haul that is. And Pittsburgh uh, also added Bob Moose when they added Richie Hebner. So we can skip that for now. And Dick Woodson was added when Matty Alou was. We can skip Seattle now. Philadelphia is on the clock, and they're doing some smart stuff. The Braves are doing some smart stuff. This is all a pre, pre, uh, preview for Mike Schmidt arriving and taking this team to the next level. But right now, they improve Terry Harmon. He becomes their best hitting infielder with Larry Boa, Denny Doyle, and Tony Taylor. He's hitting 284 with this improved card in 1972. All right, the Yankees, this could be a trade, future trade. They needed basically all right-handed bats. They needed a DH against lefties. They need a second baseman against lefties and an outfielder against lefties. Celebrino Sanchez can only play third base, but he's a two. They already have Greg Nettles, who's a one. So they might want to uh, float him out here in a draft and trade to a team needy of defense at third base. Celerino Sanchez has a decent card against lefties. Right now, he'd be their overqualified DH as he has defensive capabilities. All right, Portland. This is a nice little pick. Don Durham, a 72 card of righty who can get righties out, not lefties, but that's okay because they have John Strohmeyer, who's just the opposite. So they they have the matchup bullpen they like, they're starting to make some nice picks in this draft. I mean, I love the Nellie Bryles pick, the Ray Corbin pick, and the Don Durham. Three pitchers I like. I don't like the offense that much. But the pitchers are pretty good for Portland. The Twins added Dave Goltz at age 23. A little surprising. He's very young here. And his platoon is not good. He can he dominates righties, but the lefties know seem to know what's coming. And if you load your lineup up with left-handed hitters, which you can do in the carryover league, is most teams have six. The minimum have three. But if Goltz faces a team with le six left-handed hitters, it's over. He's got a nice 267 ERA, but vulnerable to lefties. They decided to bring him up now, not caring about. They can just improve his card when he starts to improve. No big deal, let's get him in the league, is the mantra here. All right, speaking of improvement, the Vegas team, a team that notoriously likes to improve the current lot, as the current lot's not very good normally, have improved Tim Cullen at second base. He was a 211 hitting second baseman, and now he is a 261 hitting second baseman. Congratulations, Tim Cullen and Las Vegas, continuing to improve their team. They won that division last year, but that doesn't say a lot because all that division is expansion teams. All right, Kansas City, with their pick earlier in the draft, announced that Ed Kirkpatrick would, would join Lou Piniella from the 1972 box. And here's a, it's funny, Baltimore is next on the clock, and Houston's drafting, and um, Baltimore has the, right, whites to Eddie, uh, the rights to Eddie Watt, and calling their bluff, Houston said, do you want any Watt? Because we do. So they had to fork up a draft token to the team who's... It's like trading in the next draft... Swapping draft picks. Um, so Houston gets Eddie Watt from the Orioles. They give the Orioles a token. Now think about this. Eddie Watt's got a 217 ERA and a 1095 whip. And the Orioles were willing to just give him away for a draft token because they don't really need him. And helping Houston means it hurts 
the teams out west, the Giants, the Dodgers, and Padres. So, I guess the Orioles wanted to get Eddie Watt out of the American League where he could hurt them. All right, so then the Orioles, <laughs> they actually talked about this last round. They could have had Johnny Oates, but they waited. Well, they waited, and they took Johnny Oates anyway. So now they have, they took Kurt Bleffrey, who could be a catcher, but he's actually, can also be a second baseman and a third baseman and an outfielder. So Oates will actually be the platoon catcher with Echebaron. Bleffrey will actually be a just another left-handed bat who can play anywhere as a utility player. Oates and Bleffrey. It's just interesting, clever roster utilization, but not much punch out of either guy, of course. Oakland announced earlier that they would improve Joe Rudy to the chagrin of the rest of the American League. He joins Ken Holtzman from the dynasty box of 72 and of course the dodgers way back in the first round announced that they would put the jim brewer card with the silly 126 era and 0 0.84 whip and no hits on his card against right-handed batters the best left-handed pitcher in baseball was announced a long time ago in this draft all right Nice little pick for the Angels. And actually, remember I started this draft, I was lamenting their early picks. Singer, John Stone, Billy Parker, McLaughlin, Tovar. Well, ever since then, in the middle rounds, the Angels are doing some smart, cool stuff. They added a couple 300 hitters. Uh, Bobby Valentine and Richie Scheinbloom, not exactly household names, but they actually hit 300 in 1973. And they discovered in the a diamond in the rough you could say is that Cecil, Cecil Upshaw could not have been put on waivers last year because he did not play in 1970 because he was hurt so he had to go into retirement but he comes out of retirement and, and continues his career beginning in 1971 and the Angels discovered that 1972 would be the outlier good year with a 1.28 whip so the Angels were clever and looked where no one else was looking and found a nice little relief pitcher to complete their staff and it's the angels naturally a team that always benefits from pitching a benefit they, they had a great pitching staff last year that carried them and they're picking up right where they left off the big red machine we talked about this pick in the last video that they would take say uh, pedro bourbon because interestingly his ERA is worse in 72 and 73, but he puts fewer men on base. I mean, his whip was like a buck 40 with an ERA of two in 73. So you're getting a lot of wins because you're, you're pitching for the Cincinnati Reds. Doesn't mean you're necessarily a good pitcher. Here, however, Bur Burbone is pretty good. Um, and he joins Wayne Granger and Clay Carroll as the right-handed portion of the Reds' bullpen. Just kind of, you know, uh, Paying the toll, continuing the Big Red Machine tradition there. All right, the Giants needed nothing. Well, of course, they needed two players, but basically they could have, they really could have gone into this league with an 18-man roster and been okay. They needed to add a hitter. A position didn't really matter. They had all the positions covered. They had more, they hardly have any platoons. They have duplicate guys. They've got like five center fielders. They didn't draft Gary Matthews. They kept him in the minor leagues when he should be in the majors. Because they have uh, Barrett Bobby Bonds and, and Henderson and etc. So they took Ed Goodson. He's actually better in 73. But 73, they like Tito Fuentes. They could have flipped these two. They had a better Ed Goodson. Uh, but again, it's like teams are, teams are now looking at simply improving guys more often year to year. So Goodson might get improved, bumped up to a 73 card next year. As it stands, it's a 280, 739 OPS card. All right, the Red Sox, oh, man. Well, Doug Griffin was just sitting out there because he doesn't hit very well. And apparently, teams were neglecting to look at his defense as a 119 second baseman and Unfortunately for the rest of the American League, the Red Sox just keep doing smart things. Now they've got a defense to help a very good pitching staff, and of course we don't need to talk about their offense. Doug Griffin, a 1-19 at second base, 
He's the third second baseman technically acquired in the offseason because they started by getting Tommy Harper, but now they're going to kick him into the outfield. Then they drafted uh, Mike Andrews, but he's bad defensively at second base, so they might make him the DH, and Doug Griffin would then fill in at second base. But, uh, ra- yeah, the royalty of Major League Baseball. The Tigers. Uh, they were looking, they were scouting the top available free agents, and the top available free agent was a left handed hitting catcher. And the Tigers needed a left handed hitting catcher to platoon with Bill Freehand, who hits right handed. And Freehand can throw, this guy can. It's the best player on the board, fits the need like a, a glove. It's the perfect pick for the Tigers. It's good to see this team. They won the they won the American League last year with a 500 record, if you want to call it that. They or they were below 500, slipped into the playoffs, and then ran it to the World Series. They're bringing an old cast back in a lot of areas: Northrop, uh, McAuliffe, Norm Cash, but John Stevenson will help them a lot. And lastly, the New York Mets. Here we go. So on this board of catchers available in 1972, when the Tigers were on the clock, John Stevenson was the top catcher on the clock, and the second catcher on the clock was Duffy Dyer. Um, <laughs> so the New York Mets took their own guy, Duffy Dyer. This era, uh, throwing arm is rather dubious. This might have to go... The, the computer seems to benefit catchers who have a high percentage of guys caught stealing more so than what Stratomatic reports. So this this actually this minus three arm might turn into a minus two arm. Dyer can throw though, but so can Grody. And so uh and uh Duffy Dyer has power. Uh Dyer and Grody might share playing time. I thought Grody would be the full time dude. Now I'm thinking Dyer was gonna get a nice chunk of playing time. Uh, Grody had 463 plate appearances in 70, and Dyer had 363 in 72. So that's more than enough for these two guys uh, battling for catching duties. That's it for the sixth round of the 70-73 Summer League. Hope you're enjoying this. We'll see you next time.